Okay, good morning. Uh, just first an information, the first lesson uh, uh, is online. I just noticed that uh, the frame is not, I mean, the ideal one, so I changed the frame, but I want to just inform you that the first two lines will be on the videos. I mean, you're back at, if, if you're fine with that, otherwise you should move uh, back for private reasons you don't want. No, no, the back. You should say hello uh, over there, okay? <laughs> okay, let us continue and uh, talking about kinematics. The audio is not bad in the, in the registration. Could be better, but it's not bad. So I need, I mean, that the audience to be silent in order to have it better. And pro the pronunciation is what is, is it, and sorry about that. <clears throat> so let us continue talking about uh, kinematics. We saw in the first lesson rotation matrix and various kind of uh, orientation representations. We will continue with the homogeneous transformation today. Just uh, as a very brief recap, we need to build some bricks that will be used later on to represent the configuration of our robot that it is the first step in order to understand it and to move it. Sorry, you are making the lesson. Okay. The first step to understand the configuration of the robot in, the, in space and then to build a controller or some kind of algorithms in order to move the robot and to steer it the way we want. So we saw basically four kinds of different representations, rotation matrices, then Euler angles, Z, Y, Z, and roll pitch AO, uh, axis angle, and quaternions. And we saw a little bit the pro and cons of uh, each of them, except for the last column that we will see uh, later on. Today we are, talking, we are going to talk about first homogeneous transformations. See, it's really something uh, that I mean, conceptually, it's very simple. We just need a systematic instrument in order to build up build up uh, the composition of uh, all, now we can see that those are roto translations, so we have a rotation and translation. The <coughs> robot for us is a serial chain of rigid bodies, okay? So for us the robot will be several rigid bodies connected by joints. And uh, we need just a systematic way, nothing that is uh, conceptually complex. For the moment, uh, let us represent <laughs> if I have a point P that is uh, written as uh, P expressed in frame zero, we'll, we will use this notation in order to denote the frame in which it is expressed. And then we do have uh, another frame frame 1. Okay? And we want to represent the same point in the two frames. So expressed in frame 0 this is the 3 by 1 vector representing the point coordinates. <coughs> Express in frame 1, this is the 3 by 1 vector representing the point. And if we also know the point connecting the origin of frame 1 with respect to the origin of frame 0 expressed in frame <coughs> 0, so this is the notation, we can easily write 
that this vector is simply given by the sum of those two vectors, but the second one, expressed in frame one, need first to be rotated in frame zero. So this is basically the relationship, okay? Just to memorize here, you have uh, frame one, the frame in which this vector is uh, represented, and this is the rotation from frame one to zero. Okay, so it's just a, a way to memorize the convention. Now, if I want to explicitate P expressed in frame one from this relation, I need first to multiplicate I need to make um, a left multiplication by the inverse of this matrix. We do know that this matrix exists because it's a rotation matrix. So always determinant equal to one. Not even, I mean, different from zero. It's equal to one. So I do know that it exists. And uh, I know something else. I know that uh, its inverse is equal to its transpose. Okay? If I want, uh, I can also use this notation and say that the rotation from uh, 1 to 0 transpose is the rotation from 0 to 1. This is just uh, a definition. In the end, I can just easily explicitate this relationship. Okay? Just left multiplicating by the matrix and so on. Okay. So, very easy no, concept of uh, uh, elementary geometry. It's not very compact. I want to have it in, in a more compact way. We will use a lot matrix multiplications in, in robotics. So let us try to avoid to have uh, the sum of those two terms. Let us try to, to have it, this rotor, trans uh, rotor translation, express as the multiplications of a matrix by a proper vector. And this can uh, be achieved by defining a four by one vector that is just denoted as homogeneous vector, where the first three components are the same as P. And then we add one, constant, one, is always one, okay? And we define an homogeneous transformation matrix. This homogeneous transformation matrix is a four by four matrix, and the last line of this matrix <laughs> is always constant. line is 0, 0, 0, 1. The way it is written there is formally correct in the sense that 0, bold face, is a vector of all 0 element of proper dimension. Proper means that it depends from the formula we are using. Okay? So now, if I write 0 transpose, it means know, a line of zero, the dimension, I take it from here, and this is a rotation matrix. So I know that here I have a three by three matrix. Okay, so zero, zero, zero. One, so the four, the four row of this matrix is always constant. Then here I have uh, O one zero, that is three by one. And here I have a rotation matrix. Okay? So why it is convenient to have uh, such a 4x4 four four matrix? It is just a way to have a compact computation of the rotor translation. So now, if I just make 
the matrix multiplication, matrix by vector, I just have uh, the homogeneous representation of P in frame zero is equal, the homogeneous representation of P in frame one, and then there is this uh, homogeneous transformation matrix. From the notation point of view, this is the same as a rotation matrix. Okay? So we achieved uh, just a compact way to have uh, a roto translation that is similar to the sole rotation. Okay? This is the, I mean, the only the very simple scope that we achieved with the homogeneous transformation matrices. Nothing exciting. If I want to make the inverse transformation from the symbolic aspect, I just write A, I just reverse the role of uh, the two frames. The two frames, 0 and 1 now, it will be I and J in a generic case. But obviously, from the mathematical aspect, I need to compute the inverse of this matrix. Okay? So, A from 0 to 1 is we have defined 1 to 0, so the inverse, and uh, we can uh, easily understand that, that this is the inverse. Actually, I'm not going to make really the inverse of the matrix. I'm just going to read it from here, okay? Because here, if I read this one, I can understand that this is the inverse. The rotation is just you know, the inverse of the rotation, the last line is always zero, 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 one. And then here, we do have uh, the vector connecting <coughs> the origin of the two frames, but with a proper sign and with a proper rotation. But conceptually, it's always the same, okay? So the similarity with the rotation uh, uh, does not go until the fact that the inverse is equal to the transpose, because it's not. So the inverse is different from the transpose. It's very, very simple computation. But now, what is useful is that uh, if I have uh, several frames connected to one each other, and I want to represent uh, a point that I know its representation in frame n, I know all the successive <coughs> roto translations, it is very compact to have it, the representation of p in frame 0. So I just have to multiply as if they were rotation matrices, a, 0, 1, a, 1, 2, and so on. So we will, you will write, uh, I mean, the code to do it in the first uh, uh, practice lesson. You will see that, I mean, it ends up uh, in writing very small function with a few number of lines. Okay. What is a robot for us? For us, a robot, as I said, will be a set of links connected via joints. From the graphical aspect, for us, the joints will be rotational, and the draw will be one of uh, those three, depending from the <laughs> perspective, and uh, prismatic. And we will draw it them that way, depending on the perspective. Uh, some of the plots of uh, graphics in the slides are in Italian the, for the reason I told you because I gave, um, I, gave I, I received uh, the material from the textbook of Bruno and uh, some of the plots I mean are already there it's not a, they're not uh, um, uh, vectorial graphics files so but rotational and prismatic okay it's, you, you can do it. Okay, so what is a direct kinematics? The direct kinematics uh, is the computation of the transformation from the base frame to the end effect. As I said, uh, we will work with the serial chain. 
we will work only with the open serial chain in this class. What is an open serial chain? This is a, an open serial chain. And this is a closed one. There are good reasons to have a closed one, especially for mechanical reasons. But we are not going to cover them. In, book, in textbook, uh, closed chain are considered as well. Okay? If you can, <coughs> I mean, you can appreciate that here there is an additional constraint in the sense that you have uh, two motors here, one, one, and then they connect here. So you, you need to apply an additional constraint that here they have the same coordinates. But we are not going to study here. No. Okay? What is the degree of mobility of my robot? If I have a simple pendulum, let me say that this is a robot, it can rotate around this axis. What is its degree of freedom? So one. Clearly, it can have only one movement. And for us, each joint will bring to the system one degree of freedom. And so for us, basically, the degrees of freedom is, will be equal to the number of joints. Very simple. Okay? We will study rotational and prismatic joints. We will work only with rotationals in practice. Okay? So the... the the project uh, and the code will be written only for a rotational joint. It's nothing different, it's just simpler from the programming aspect. This is the only reason why we're going to do it. Okay. So this is direct kinematics. <coughs> Graphically, with this symbol here, just want to underline, I do know what is the joint position. Okay, so the joint is a motor, and I do know the position. We will see how we are going to measure them. It's very, it's very easy, very cheap, and very... <coughs> it's a good measurement, high frequency without noise, and without troubles of any kind from the measurement aspect. And I do want to know what is the end effect configuration or pose, what does it mean? I do want to know what is the end effect or configuration. I want position and orientation of the end effect or fixed frame. Okay? If I say I want to know the configuration of a rigid body, it means I want to know this, a frame attached, attached to the rigid body. So I do want to know the configuration of the end effect. Uh, let us first reply with the intuition. Is it complicated or not, what I'm asking for? I, I know the base frame is fixed somewhere on the table or somewhere that doesn't move. Okay, For us, the the earth is flat and uh, does not rotate, okay? Mm -hmm. For several other people, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And here yeah. I have a first joint mm -hmm. that is rotating in that shape. I know the end, so it's very easy, because I know the length of the robot, yes. It is a, a data of uh, the data sheet. So from here to here, it's just a matter of using one homogeneous transformation vector. Nothing that uh, can bring some uh, <coughs> some uh, uh, unexpected situations. Nothing singular. It's very easy. And the same for all the other joints. So in fact, direct kinematics is really systematic. It's boring. There is nothing to do. Uh, the only way that may uh, make it a little bit easy and to decide the convention to fix the frame on the rigid body. 
this is the only way because if I have uh, here I I put the frame casually randomly okay just in the middle of the link a little bit close to the end here exactly on the end what if uh, uh, you put the frame in another way this is fixed to this link which one is better no one is better than the other. It's just a matter of a convention. So <coughs> maybe only the last one, we may agree that it's better to have uh, a vector pointing out for some reason. But for all the others, there are not specific reasons to prefer one uh, fixed frame to the other. And so the community uh, came up uh, with a convention that we are going to see, the dynamic tartenberg convention, how to put, to define the linked fixed, body fixed frame. Unfortunately, uh, what was a very good idea in the beginning came up to be a little bit confused along the history in the sense that we have a 1DH convention that we are going to study here, the same as the textbook. And then in the, in the literature there is a, a modified DH convention. But what is worst uh, is that the community that used the modified DH convention does not call it modified DH convention. They just call it DH convention, the same. Okay. So with the same name, we have two different uh, conventions. And uh, in addition to that, each single company that build a robot use its own convention. Okay? So what does it mean? That we are going to study something that will help us in understanding uh, where to put a body fixed frame. Whenever you are going to use uh, material from someone else coming from another lab or uh, PDF file uh, taken from, uh, from internet or an example uh, in MATLAB or whatever, pay attention at the convention because you can have uh, a certain number. This is uh, 40 centimeters and you feel confident of the way you read this number but maybe it refers to something different with the same name, okay? So... <coughs> Let us start with our convention. Basically, what we are going to do today is to compute this is a base frame, this is an end effector frame. The base frame uh, from now on uh, will have the subscript B and the end effector E. Okay, so we want the position, the vector connecting the origin from the region of base frame to the region of the end effect of fixed frame expressed in base frame. P, E, B. Okay? Subscript, uh, upper script. And then <coughs> we want the orientation from the end effect to the base frame. We are going first to use rotation matrices. So we want the three unit vectors that here we define uh, with three letters N, S, and A for one reason that A is, uh, where is it? The approach unit vector so the vector pointing out then S is the sliding unit vector is a, a vector of course on the normal S and N are more or less arbitrary it's important that we do agree on the approach vector okay so the, sliding one? the sliding one is uh, normal to the approach one actually the two S and N are more or less arbitrary in the sense that they don't have a specific meaning sliding means to slide you know on the on the normal to the approach direction. So it's just a matter of convention. So what is our purpose? Is to find the homogeneous transformation matrix T from 
E to B. This is our purpose, okay? Here, nothing new. We just wrote the rotation matrix in terms of the three unit vectors, okay? As we did the very first day with the definition of uh, rotation matrix. From the <coughs> computational aspect, you will have uh, to write a function, MATLAB function, where the very first line will be, okay, the command function, we will see, the output, a certain name, t, equal direct kinematics, Q. What is Q? We haven't defined Q. Q is a vector of joint variables. Let me... explain what is Q and you will uh, work with Q all days all along the, the class. Plan are to be. Okay, every every time that you need to to visualize a concept, just start with the planner to link. Okay? If you need to visualize something in in uh, in, uh, in this class and then uh, eventually you go on a full dimensional case. But to visualize, let us start in that way. This is a certain configuration, approach, sliding, for example. Okay? This is the approach. This is the base frame. I do want to compute this vector position and the rotation from here to here. Now, the joints are the steel motors here. We can move the robot around those two directions. So, this will be function of those two angles. Okay? Of course, it will be also function of this length and this length. But those are constant. And once that I decided the robot I'm going to work with, they will not change. So from the functional aspect, the function is from Q. If I define Q1 and Q2 in a proper way that we will see today, for the moment there are two angles expressing gradients, and uh, I have uh, a vector of joint positions. My position orientation in the end of vector is function of the joint positions. So it's, it's function of the configuration. Uh, so Q1 and Q2 is the position of uh this angle, but it's angle. angle, but we are going to define it now mathematically. For the moment, it's just the angle position in a more or less intuitive way. Okay, so this is our today's objective. As I said, this is very systematic. It's very boring. Just how to come to compute uh, the, the successive uh, roto-translation that's the same as the successive homogeneous transformation methods. But we want to do it uh, with a convention. For example, I can do it by hand, uh, so without any smart tool, uh, by, resorting to, by resorting to geometric and uh, I can more or less easily end up with this homogeneous transformation matrix. If you look at the x-axis of uh, the end effect of its frame is 0, 0, 1. It's always pointing out from the screen, okay? 
Then I have the N, okay? Then I have the sliding, and the sliding, I'm not going to, to go into the trigonometric details, okay? But the sliding can be represented with this S12. S12 is just a compact notation to say sinus of <coughs> theta1 plus theta2. And theta1, I decide that is this angle, and theta2 is this angle. So, yes? Okay, so we are defining them in a base frame now. We are computing the, the unit vector that are fixed to the end effector. Those two unit vectors, we are going to compute the coordinate in the base frame. So, the vector going out from the screen will always go out from the screen and expressed in the base frame is always 0, 0, 1. Then, if we look at the x coordinates of this one, this is given by the sinus of the sum of the two angles. Okay? By trigonometry. Without going into the details, uh, we, we, we remember the uh, theorems of Pythagora. Okay? And the the, the z coordinate of the sliding vector is zero. The sliding vector always lies on this plane x, y, what is called. Okay? That's the reason why we have to use a zero. Yes? Can you explain a little bit about sliding? No, it's uh, just a name. I mean, it's just a name. You can call it uh, x, y, and z. I have just a name. Uh, I mean, sliding means that uh, if this is the approach vector, okay, you have uh, an orthogonal plane. Uh, one will be the sliding direction and the other the normal. It's just a name because you have a sliding plane, actually. So it, it's not a very smart name, but it's just a name, okay? I'm, uh, I, will, uh, I will keep the notation of the, the textbook, all the... All the Okay, then the approach, uh, well, tri trigonometry, but conceptually equal to the other. Okay, we have uh, a projection of unit vectors. That's, that's it. For the position vector, we can see that compute the x coordinates by first projection this here mm -hmm. and it's a1 cosinus to theta1 plus the, uh, the following segment it is a2 cosinus of theta1 plus theta2 okay trigonometry Y coordinates, then zero, because the end effector position uh, lies on the xy plane by construction of the row. And this is always zero, 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 one. Can never change, because due to the definition of homogeneous transformation methods. Okay, but we can do it by end for this very simple structure. But in that way, it's more or less useless because we are not going to work with planar robots. We are going to work with the seven degrees of freedom ro uh, robot. At least six, but in the lab we have seven and your project will be with the seven degrees of freedom robot. It is too time consuming. Is it not, we cannot generalize, we cannot communicate one each other because it's difficult to understand how you define the, the frame and so on. So we need uh, another way. What we need to do is uh, to develop a systematic tool. A systematic tool means I want to be able to make this systematic. What does it mean? The robot frame 0 to frame 1 
and then from 1 to 2, and so on. If you look at the dependency of the function, here I have a bond phase Q. It means that this function depends on all the n joint lengths. Okay? As we saw. The end effect of position orientation depends on the values of both the two angles for the, for the planet. But here, if you look at the successive rotor translation, there is only one joint value. So we are building up a systematic way where each joint will provide us a rotor translation. And if we do in a smart way, we can have uh, each homogeneous transformation matrix uh, defined uh, in the same way. Systematic and easy to, to <coughs> Then there is another <laughs> The last line of this slide says something a little bit unclear. Why? Here I have uh, the transformation from n to 0, okay, function of q. But here I have the end effect of frame and the base frame, function of q. And then I have two additional frames. Let me explain easily why. Uh, I have a robot. And uh, the procedure we are going to see will we'll put one frame attached to each rigid link and one base frame. So, zero, one, two, three, up to n. <coughs> but then over there I have two additional uh, transformations. Basically, those two transformations are application-oriented. It's pure engineered. If I, if I have this robot and I put it on a table, I will probably have some work to do with some other devices, and so I will have uh, already a base frame on the table. So here, I will have another frame, and the transformation from this to this will always be, will always be constant. And this is the reason why there is not dependency there. This matrix does not have uh, the round parentheses with two. It means that it is constant. Then I have uh, my transformation, function of Q. In the end, well, if I have a robot, most of the time the robot will bring a tool to weld, to glue, or even a camera, whatever. So here, we will have, for example, an instrument. This is a welding system. And uh, when I have to write uh, the control loop, the welding point will be this one, okay? So from uh, the end effector, I will need another sort of translation, depending on the device I'm using. I can have a, a, a camera mounted on it. So, a camera with an objective, and this will be the point of interest, and so on. Okay, so, I need to add two constant transformations that depends on the applications, and they are usually known. I know them. Well, it means that you consider the degree of freedom as part of the robot. You can have fun field cameras, for example. Okay, so uh, in, our, in our lab, uh, we have uh, the two MOVO humanoid robots, and uh, on the torso, you have uh, a Kinect. The Kinect has two motors with pan tilt. So pan tilt means the two degrees of freedom that you have uh, sometimes in, uh, in cameras video camera and for us those are part of the robot so in the end 
the sensor does not have uh, the Giza freedom because the one that he ev it eventually has, they are part of the robot. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be uh, complex from the notation aspect. I do not want you to to learn the procedure, okay? Uh, but I need to spend few words in order to understand what is for and to, to understand uh, uh, some definitions that we are going to do. Okay, so we don't need to learn it. You are not going to implement it, the convention, because for the practice I'm going to give you already the position of the frames. Okay? But we need to understand it in order to understand the numbers that we will work with in our robot. So basically, <coughs> what I need is a systematic way to have the robot translation from a certain frame that here is i minus 1 to the frame i. Okay? So i is a generic index along the robot, along my serial chain of rigid body. I have a frame i and then frame i minus 1. I want a systematic way. Okay? This systematic way is based on two rotor translations of a fewer degrees of freedom. I have a first rotor translation with a translation of a certain number, a certain length, that I will define with the letter D and the rotation of alpha, and then an additional rotor translation of a certain length A and angle theta. Those two uh, researchers worked in a way to, to have a, a common way to compute those four numbers, D, alpha, A, and theta. So their effort has been to say, okay, whatever the structure is, if you follow those rules, you will compute those four numbers equal to mine. Okay? In, in, in this way, a robot is just a succession of those four numbers. We are not going to go into the details of this one. Okay? But what are we going to do is to select how we need to fix the rigid body frame. And so we need to decide the origin and the three unit vectors. This is what we are going to do. And this is a systematic way to do it. So basically, <coughs> just the intuition, if uh, I have a planar robot, and this is the sense of rotation of the joint. Just the intuition say, okay, let's put z in that direction, okay? And let us agree on this, on this first assumption. Starting from that, that is very easy, and uh, uh, it, 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 uh, it uh, complies with our intuition. All the other choices are a little bit less, you know, easy to, to see at the first sight, but it's not is not important. As I said, what is important is that we have uh, some rules. If you, if you give uh, a new structure to someone that works in robotics, we will not be able to do it without looking at the rules again. Okay, no one knows them by, by uh, maybe someone, yes, but not me. Okay. DH convention brings up to some uh, DH parameters. The parameters are what represent really the kinematic of the robot, so the structure of the robot. And the parameters are those four numbers. D, then alpha is not, is not represented here, A and theta. Alpha, yes, alpha is here.
those four numbers are what you need for each single homogeneous transformation matrix. And then the added value of this convention is that uh, actually you have uh, three of those four numbers that are always constant. Three because they are A and alpha. Then if you have a rotational joint, D is also constant and theta is actually the joint value, the joint variable. The opposite if you have a prismatic joint, D is the joint value and theta is constant. So this is very useful because now uh, I have a, a robotic structure and I tell you a serial chain of rigid bodies and telling you, okay, from one link to the other, you only need four numbers to represent this connection. And uh, those four numbers, three are constant, and one is at the joint variable. Okay, so <coughs> I'm simplifying a lot the way I'm representing a robot, and I'm doing on a common knowledge, a common a convention, actually. Okay, so those two homogeneous transformation matrices come after the definition that we skipped. So the, the value of those elements, we are going just to ignore them, is not important. We compose them and we have this homogeneous transformation. But now I want to read a little bit this thing. To go from frame uh, I minus 1 to frame I as function only of the, the joint I, this is the expression. Let me read it. The last line is always the same. Constant by construction. No surprise. Then cosines theta I. If this is a rotational joint, this is ju just the angle of the joint. Okay? Minus sinus theta i cosinus alpha i. Okay, so yeah, sinus theta i the same. Cosinus alpha i is constant, depending on the structure. Okay? So for the rotation part, I only have alpha and theta. Alpha constant and theta depending on my configuration. For the translation, I have uh, the two lengths, A and B, and theta. What is important is that here I have the four parameters of the link I. Okay? Only the link I. One is moving and it will be the joint, and the other are if I want to write a program, this will be the same for all the links. I only need to tell to the function the DH parameters. But then I have four lines that compute the homogeneous transformation matrix. So very systematic, very convenient to write code. Yes, by link, you mean a rigid body? Yes, link a rigid body is the same. When I want to underline the physical aspect rigid body. Link is the piece of robot, let me say, but it's the same. Okay, operative procedure. There is an operative procedure, okay? We, we, we can read it line by line and we can put all the frames on the correct place. We are going to have uh, 10 minutes, so at 10 five we will continue by looking at some robotic structures, okay?